Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Triad Expeditions and in this episode we are going to be showing you the Kinsman Hardware shower awning on our FJ Cruiser. Uh, we're down here in Destin, Florida enjoying the good weather and we're actually going to install the awning for you up on our Baja rack and this would be really kind of one of two different videos that we're going to do featuring the Kinsman Hardware products this one being the shower awning, the next one being the right hand mount 270 awning that's going to go on this side of the FJ. So I'm going to walk you around a little bit, show you a couple things, and then we'll move out and actually show you the components of the shower tent. So if you will, come on with me right here and I'll show you where the shower tent's going to go. So previously, we had a shower tent that we used, um, and it was one of those Camp Right shower tents. CBT makes one also. And they come in a nice um, bag that you take out and throw up and stake down and the wind can get them and they're always dirty and that type of thing and you put them away wet and so there's big there's a lot of disadvantages to that type of setup and that's what we have been successful in using for quite some time and it definitely has served the purpose for us to put uh, our toilet uh, and also are you know to take showers uh, using a jerry can uh, but now we've kind of stepped our game up uh, with kinsman hardware uh, offering these new products we definitely have embraced them and realized the quality that we've seen in these products and so that is what we're going to be going to now um, the cool thing about the product is is that it can be deployed very quickly and that you're not fighting with this tent that you're taking out of a bag and throwing up so we'll show you how the the awning actually operates this will be the location of the tent right here so this will be the location that we're going to mount the tent and the reason why we decided to put it in this location is because if we're out somewhere away from the trailer we can actually go ahead and deploy the toilet if we need to on the roadside if, we, if we're on a trail and give us some privacy so putting it on the truck is, is a good choice and that's why we decided to put it on the truck uh, we're going to use some bomber products uh, awning mounts and I'll definitely show you those on the tabletop in here in just a second um, so let's get on with the components of the shower tent all right I just want to show you a couple things that we're going to be installing here these are the awning mounts that we're going to be using and these are the bomber product uh, awning mounts uh, these are going to work really nicely because they're extremely sturdy and they go on a one inch bar They do make them in different sizes So if you don't have a one inch bar to go on your roof rack, you can order it in the appropriate size um, But as you can see they're all built aluminum very high quality uh, made in Montana and uh, This is what we're going to be using so uh, this could be what you need possibly to mount this uh, shower tent on your roof rack uh, stainless steel hardware and then here is the shower tent and um, I'm going to show you how it deploys more when it's actually installed but this you can kind of see the basic idea as we have it set here on the table. The one thing to keep in mind and we're going to kind of have to do it before we actually mount it up there is the back of the panel here does not have any holes because uh, Kidsman Hardware does not know which holes that you're actually going to utilize here on the inside. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure up uh, the brackets onto the roof rack. We're going to see how these are going to integrate and as you can see the holes uh, pre-measured are going to line up really nicely on the back. So the only thing that we're going to have to do is once we figure out exactly which holes we're going to use we're going to put this up here and we're going to take a pencil mark the holes and then we'll cut the, the rubber uh, the PVC bag here so that we can put the bolts through and mount these on the back to get it on the roof. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing next. Um, everything is very high quality, uh, very good product. Uh, the material here is made out of Sumbrella, which is made in South Carolina. Uh, this is the same material that they use on boats, so it's meant to hold up to wet environments and also UV resistant. Uh, very high quality, very abrasion resistant, uh, should hold up for a very long time. And then this, was, this basically just unfolds and then you can stake it at each corner to hold it down to the ground. So, all right, next step we'll see is actually installing it onto the FJ. All right, we're gonna shift gears here a little bit. Uh, we are no longer in Destin, Florida. We are back home now, and the shower awning is not mounted. And I'll tell you why. 
And I just want to preface this discussion here by just saying that I'm not trying to bash anybody's product at all, um, but let's get right to it. So the bomber product awning mount um, did not work out as I expected, and that's not usually the case. I usually try to do my research as much as possible so that I have a good expectation of what I'm going to need uh, when I'm doing an install or an installation, and things usually work out pretty good with with some exceptions obviously to the rule and, and this definitely was one of those exceptions so what occurred um, was I got the the awning mount up there and the sun was coming down hard you know the wife's telling me hey why are you doing this in the sun make sure to wear your sunblock and all that so she's already you know concerned about my sun exposure which ended up being okay um, but when I talked to the owner about this product uh, going on a one inch tube yeah, he said definitely make sure that you put some rubber around that and that did concern me a little bit uh, because you know he was saying that was going to be necessary for this to work well when I was down in Florida obviously I didn't have any rubber with me and I actually forgot about it completely so I got these on there and they were not holding the bar properly And if you see here there's really uh, just a little bit of area you know we're talking maybe a quarter contact area uh, where this clamps down and that ended up I think being the, the biggest weakness of this product was uh, it was spaced about like this and the bolts were in there I cranked it down as much as I could and it, it was just sliding around there uh, without holding whatsoever once again the rubber wasn't in there so after not putting the rubber in there and then cranking these down and it just not working out uh, I, I finally uh, gave up and it, it wasn't pretty because I was fighting these things uh, I was well determined no matter how hot it got I was gonna make this work and uh, I thought if I could just get them tightened down more then it would work out so there's bolts that go in here nuts that go underneath um, and the Baja rack sits really close to this to the roof of the FJ and getting a washer and a nut underneath here between the the roof rack and the FJ uh, man, I, I had to use all my ninja skills to be able to get that done, uh, holding the washer and the lock nut underneath there and then getting the wrenches involved. It was a nightmare. My wife was like, what is taking you so long? You know, just really just kind of wondering, you know, what was going wrong because she knew I was frustrated and I'd say it's probably the most frustrated I've been about uh, any insulation in a very, very long time. So once again, that's why I'm saying I'm not trying to badmouth this. Here's the thing, if you're using a round mount uh, insulation of any type that's close to the roof of a vehicle, don't use this mount. I'll just be very blunt about that. Do not use this mount because it is not the best choice out there. Uh, and I can say that by using another product that, and I'm, I'm going to show you what I'm going to show you what you should use here in a second. If you're using like a square bar mount, which is where this is square in here like a crossbar, a square crossbar, uh, which th these advertise to be able to be used on a round mount and a, and a square bar, this would be a great choice because it's going gonna, it's gonna to be, first off, it's extremely well made. So that's the cool thing about it is that it is very well made. I mean, it's a super heavy duty construction. You're just not going to find anything that's going to hold up you know, better. I mean, it's super, super thick. Um, so that's that's really the benefit of that and that's why I was wanting to use this product and then not only that but it does um, have two slots here so that if your mounts actually allow you to slide some bolts in you actually have two mounts and with this big gusset on top you're just not going to get anything that's going to be stronger and aluminum lightweight so uh, also by the way when I tightened the bolts aren't here because when I tightened it down just to the one inch and I did tighten it down evenly all the way around it bent the bolts so I ended up using to have to use my impact gun that I keep with me my Makita impact gun that's very powerful and end up breaking each individual bolt just to be able to get this off so enough about that all right uh, just my advice round mount don't use that that's not gonna work out uh, for you as easily as other products. So what should you use? What is the solution? The solution in my opinion is this right here in front of me and this is the G GZilla Designs um, product. I've done the Max Tracks mount review on them previously 
Um, I've used them several times. Uh, I had moved my Max tracks to the back of the, of the FJ Cruiser. Uh, literally, I was able to accomplish that in 10 minutes. Um, and I don't have that much time today to do this project, but now knowing that I'm going to be using these and knowing how these work, I'm very confident I'm going to be able to knock it out very quickly. So, the way that this works is you have uh, some Allen bolts here, and it clamps tightly down to the one inch bar um, and you can order these specifically for what size tube that you actually have so that's that's the real benefit of it and it clamps down extremely tight uh, without much effort whatsoever two bolts use a, um, a uh, hex head socket and with your ratchet there you can accomplish it very quickly so what this bolt does here and all the hardware is stainless steel and these are very well priced and uh, I'm going to give myself a little bit of a pat on the back here, um, so I hope you don't mind. But uh, Greg there at Gzella Designs, um, this is just the type of person that he is. I, I, I mean, I do know him well. I've, been, I've known him for years now. Um, I'd actually said in one of my videos that Greg should redesign this a particular way. And uh, the fact is, is that he has. And he's implemented it on all of his mounts, the redesign. So. I'm pretty proud of that. Um, I'm even more excited about the fact that that uh, Greg uh, decided to go with the redesign. So you can see here, there's a couple holes, and those holes go in those pins. And the problem I was having was, um, like I said earlier, you don't have much clearance under a aftermarket roof rack, and that's because they do want to keep them as close to the roof of uh, keep the center of gravity down and keep them as close to the roof for wind purposes and everything else to the actual vehicle so they purposely make them sit as low as possible well unfortunately what that does is when you're mounting accessories you really don't have much clearance underneath there and that's actually one of the reasons why a line x the fj cruiser's roof was because there was almost no way to to get in there and clean other than using like a, a blanket as a towel or something like that to go back and forth um, and, and kind of try to get some of the mildew or other things that were underneath there, the grime, from just normal uh, everyday use. And so my suggestion to, to Greg was, because what I was having a problem with is, as you can see, when, when that's on the bar, you got to be able to get underneath there with your Allen head and uh, with your socket. And even as low profile as that is, you can see that's, that's still a good two and a half, three inches there. Uh, that you, of clearance space that you need and that's just not the case especially towards the center of the roof line where it rounds upward um, so what Greg has done and this would be uh, pretty much uh, for all future uh, uh, models that he has uh, that you would purchase off his website and definitely check with him if this is something that you're curious about give him a call or shoot him an email but he actually has put the holes that is on this side where you would, uh, hope I'm not over complicating this and, and kind of making you guys don't understand, but the versatility of this is just amazing because normally that would go in there after you have it mounted like, you know, that on the side to put your awning because this is an awning mount is what this is, but it's very similar to the Max Trax mount. Um, the way it mounts, it just, it's just a larger bar to accommodate the Max Trax pins. Um, so what he has done now is now you'll actually mount this with your hex head bolts upward like this so you have all the clearance you need because they're facing you and now there's two pins there and so literally you mount this first without all the weight and then you will have these and you'll just slide them on there and put your bolt in so super easy like it definitely could not be any easier to put an awning mount on. I wish these were that way, um, but I'm not going to have any problems because this is actually going to be completely uh, vertical as far as this bar goes, will be completely vertical. But my Max Tracks, I like ha having them angled in, and that's where you run into the problems because when you angle them in, then now that puts uh, this hex bolt pointed towards the roof of the FJ. So I know I've complicated that quite a bit. I wanted to give you guys just some understanding of some of these aftermarket awning mounts. Um, definitely the strengths and weaknesses of each. Uh, for a round mount, this is the way to go. Just make sure you get the right size um, because there is multiple sizes available on uh, Gzella 
designs.com so definitely check those out and I'll put a link on there so you guys can see where to get them so what we're gonna do next is we are gonna hopefully successfully mount the Kinsman hardware uh, shining uh, shining yeah shower awning uh, up on top of the FJ and I'll definitely show you some video of that once we get it up there all right the shower awning is installed finally and it went much smoother this time um, the G Zilla design awning mounts is definitely the way to go took me about uh, maybe 10 minutes to put them up there and that was even mounting it to the back plate of the Kinsman hardware so this is what it looks like installed it's a very nice product uh, I do want to show you one thing that I added to it that does not come with it um, so let me get in the right light here so I'm not so those are the little shock cord with the ball you can get those off of Amazon and then what I did um, is have a grate here in the bottom that I added um, I'll put a link and a, well, a description that is uh, on an overlay here in the video so that way you'll be able to order it. I think it's Eagle Industries. Um, it's a made in USA uh, synthetic grate. It's like a 55 gallon barrel grate and uh, I think it's going to work really nice to keep us out of the mud when we're taking a shower. I might even decide to uh, cut this in half to make it more stowable and, and uh, make some mending plates where you can basically just uh, mend it back together really easily. So I'll let you know if I end up doing that project and I'll make a video about that. Uh, here in the bottom of each corner and the sun is not working with me today as far as, let me get on the other side here. So on each corner, what I did with the uh, shot cord uh, ball straps here is I just, uh, you should be able to see that, um, just girth hitch them on the tent side and then you loop it around and then you uh, just put it back into itself in the girth it hope opening so once again sorry about the camera work i know i'm trying to balance all of this um, but yeah it works really good these straps are adjustable here so you can adjust it for the height uh, that you need because obviously your train might be different um, even this has a little bit of a drop off hill as, as the way that the FJ is sitting. So we're gonna put a, a, a small like porta potty um, in here. That will weight it down a little bit and obviously when you're standing in it, it's not going anywhere. And if I really want to, I can put uh, four tent stakes in each corner if we're on dirt or whatever. And that would definitely keep it from going anywhere. And that will, will probably be what I do. Um, here in our Blue Ridge Overland bag, this is where we keep a lot of this stuff um, as far as our toilet goes. Let me pull that out for you. Um, because it just goes in here really nicely along with the trash. Um, it has a handle on it here. So it's just one of these, uh, has sand in it still from Dustin. It's one of these Reliance toilets with the legs in the back. So that kind of gives you an idea of what it is that we use and what you do is just put uh, glad blackout bags underneath there and uh, that works really good um, you know a lot of folks are like well you know is that really sanitary to be using a bag but yes it is and we just put baking soda in there and that keeps a little bit of the smell down and we just change it regularly these legs fold out so that's how we use the restroom on the road and so that will go in there uh, the legs would probably find their way between the grate, so that would be good. Um, and then also we keep some heavy duty tent stakes down in there. Also some really heavy duty steel ones that we get off of Amazon also. So that is the new plan for the uh, shower tent. I'm going to stop the video and then I'm going to fold it up and I'll show you how it looks when it's all folded up. Here is the awning all stowed and uh, it folds up really nice so what you do is just fold in those arms so that it's flat so it kind of folds in on itself uh, pretty easily and uh, that makes rolling it up really nice and then there's just a single strap right in the middle uh, that uh, you clip together and that holds it up there while you run the zipper across so yep nice compact design easily deployed uh, first time uh, rolling it up into the uh, into the bag and zipping it up, and I know it took took me less than a minute to do it. So 
couldn't be any easier. Um, I did go ahead and uh, just hit everything with a little bit of fluid film. I know I always talk about fluid film all the time, but um, you know, the one thing is is that uh, you know you might be forced to pack this up uh, with it a little bit moist. And uh, even though the stainless steel hardware in there is uh, going to hold up to the moisture, uh, that's just going to give it a little bit more protection. So um, definitely good choice on all the materials. Uh, definitely recommend the product. I'm looking forward to uh, utilizing it on our future trips this year. And uh, we definitely will be giving some more feedback, but uh, I have no doubt that this thing is going to perform flawlessly as uh, the people that build it. Uh, really have done a nice job of executing it and I'm very confident that they did a lot of testing before they ever put this product in to production. So uh, the next video that we will be doing regarding Kinsman hardware will be the right hand mount 270 awning like we mentioned earlier in this video. So definitely be looking for that and so if you want to be notified when that video comes out uh, make sure to subscribe. Uh, if you like the video, make sure to like. If you have any questions, definitely put them in the comments or add anything that you'd like as far as regards uh, to your experience with this product. Um, we're looking at about the middle of May uh, is when we're going to be receiving that product. There's a little bit of a lead time right now on them just because of the popularity of them and the fact that uh, really the manufacturer is kind of like a two-person uh, three-person show uh, so you know they have a limited amount of production quality so all right well thanks for everybody for watching and uh, everybody take care god bless and we'll catch you later bye